Researchers are looking at other mechanisms. So what happens is that when there's an EMF, well, this thing right now, it's hitting my cells. Mm. And what happens is that we have voltage sensors on these calcium channels. And normally the voltage, the, uh, the calcium gradient is, is made such that at the exterior of a cell, you have a lot of calcium but in the cell you have barely any calcium and depending there's calcium exchanges depending on many biological needs which i won't get into but what happens is that these voltage gated uh, calcium channels stay open when exposed to what is a foreign signal like oh what the heck is this because the levels that we're exposed to right now are about a quintillion times higher than back ancestral levels of 1920 in the microwave range, one gigahertz. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm with Nick Pinot here. We're gonna share with you how to test for non-native EMF in your home or your hotel room. We're in a hotel room right now. And uh, unbeknownst to me, there's a Wi-Fi router and we're gonna sleep, well, I'm gonna sleep here later tonight. And Nick has a bunch of different meters here. Maybe before we demonstrate how, how much stuff sure. is coming out of here, um, you have a few different types and we can maybe zoom in. Yeah, well, these are, let's say, uh, five beginning levels level meters that uh, you could consider, but it's a bit overwhelming. So let's go over like, what is the minimum? I, I would think this one is, is the uh, Enviro RD10. Uh, the goal of, of, of these l entry level meters that I call them is not to be like scientific and say, oh, I detected 10 or 100 or because the numbers are not that accurate. Mm. It's a sweeping meter. So the goal is opening that thing, uh, choosing the mode. So there's like RF that says radio frequency. Mm -hmm. So if you want to look for Wi-Fi routers, that's what I would use. And then you walk around with it and you try to find a source. Mm -hmm. So here in the room, it's high because, well, obviously... I have Let's, like even on me, right? Yeah. So this would be this would wow. be in the very red because it's emitting. So if it were a, a cell phone or if I put it, uh, e I mean, even here in between, it drops a little bit. But if I get it closer, it's going to be in the red for mm -hmm. sure. So that's a very beginning level uh, kind of meter, but it's small. It's like 140 bucks. Still an investment for most people that still think EMFs is crazy. You're going to be pretty convinced to start investing. It's worth it, and it looks at other things like magnetic fields and electrical fields. And I, I don't think you want to do an entire tutorial that would take like no, 30 that's minutes. Key but, though. Uh, but they are key to understand too. But let's say for your radio frequency for this video, it's Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, cell phones, smart meters, mm. uh, everything that we consider like Wi-Fi wi radiation or mm. microwave radiation, also called uh, radio frequency. So that's really beginning level. Real like, quick, the rate, sure. the, um, the fields here, magnetic field. So if you had a refrigerator or freezer, yeah. that's what you want to test. Uh, well, possibly. So mm. I if you if you tested magnetic fields, you would select like uh, LFM, so uh, low frequency magnetic, and then here it's 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 very low. But mm -hmm. if you go near a source of electricity, uh, this one isn't so hot. But just a, si a single plug you could see spikes in there. So if you had your head in the vicinity of a source of electricity that's strong, for example, here it's a Wi-Fi router and it emits magnetic fields, but the magnetic field stays here. Mm. It doesn't emit, it's not like Wi-Fi bounces everywhere Wi-Fi yeah. in the room. The entire room gets yeah. filled because if you can have, I can have Wi-Fi in this corner and in that corner, how is that so? Well, mm. because it's everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, it just fills the air. Here, it's a magnetic field, so it's static, and the more I go near the source, the worse it gets. Mm -hmm. So you see this thing, as long as it's not near my head, it's not a problem when it comes to magnetic fields, because yeah. the Wi-Fi is a problem, right? So uh, magnetic fields is really like, for example, uh, the motor thing, if you had your neighbor who puts uh, his fridge, the other side of your bedroom wall, you mm. don't realize it, then a fridge has a large motor. The magnetic fields could go like, oh, two feet, right? You could sleep in there, you feel uneasy, you don't sleep as good, uh, you, maybe you track your sleep. I, I have the Ura, I don't, mm -hmm. you have the same thing. So if you track your sleep, you're like, what's wrong? Maybe these magnetic, magnetic, magnetic fields in the environment. If you have an alarm clock and it's plugged in and it's right near your head, it's a problem too. I would move it away 
or just try to use your cell phone on airplane mode because a magnetic field you'll detect it it's it can be tremendous just mm-hmm. from that just from simple things so it might impact your sleep and you're in a bedroom well it's for sleep and we want deeper sleep in sure. order to heal in order to recover from all these travels and this craziness so um and the third type would be electrical fields electrical fields is just the electricity that comes from the wall so yeah. in certain situations you might be overexposed and but this meter isn't really precise for that so let's say it's it's not necessarily precise for anything but it can help you find sources right because i was able to find well first it's high mm-hmm. <laughs> here it's high there's one thing there there are these things another thing so uh, what I did in a hotel room, for example, uh, I told you so be, uh, before the interview, mm-hmm. I was in Austin in a, a hotel, a high-end luxury hotel, super classy. And then I discovered that the levels were off the charts. So I decided to record a YouTube video. That's how the, the story goes. Mm-hmm. I record, I say, hey, I'm Nick, the MF guy, blah, blah, blah. And then I remove one source and I see the levels dropping in the room. So I remove the Bluetooth thing and this other thing and this other thing. And then I, I unplug what I thought was a Wi-Fi router and I say, okay, guys, let's look at the levels. And then I film myself. I'm like, they're so high. What's <laughs> happening? And then I go towards the bed. I'm like, they're high on the pillow. Could it be? And then I dismantle the bed and there was the Wi-Fi router under the bed. Oh, my gosh. So that's such a poor design, but they don't think twice about yeah. these things. So if you have a sweeping meter like this that I use in my video on my YouTube channel, well, you can find these things because you're like, oh, is it here? No, it's like a detector, right? So mm-hmm. if you want something more precise, this one just detects the Wi-Fi and, and the Bluetooth and all these things called micro radiation, mm-hmm. but it has way better accuracy. So that's one thing. And then it has a sound function. So sorry in advance <laughs> for you guys because it sounds scary, but you're, you're gonna have to do the audio editing and the person will have ears bleeding. So this is the noise in the room. But if I go near a source, oh, batteries. Maybe batteries, but maybe the levels were too high and exploded. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but so you can hear. Yeah. So a Wi-Fi router sounds a certain way. If you had a cell phone tower, it sounds super screeching, like someone screams, like tee, 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 mm. super high pitch. So that's a cell phone tower. So what uh, professionals do with very high level meters cost several thousands of dollars. They, they hear the sound sometimes. They, they put headphones and they're like, oh, there's a cell phone tower near here because you hear the EMF environment. It transforms the signal into sound. Mm. So it's really this one, you could not only tell that it's there, but you could tell, oh, this sounds here, it sounds lo- loud. If you go camping with this, you would hear next to nothing, mm. right? In the middle of the forest. Mm. Or maybe you would hear a cell phone tower and realize, oh, dang, near the camping, there's like... Let's keep going. <laughs> exactly. Next campsite. We'll, we'll wow. go to the Grand Canyon. I don't know, yeah. like a, a protected zone. So that this is really why uh, you can explore di- different meters here. Mm-hmm. This one, uh, the Acousticum 2 is is great because it's precise and uh, and with the sound function as well. So. It really depends on, 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 on many factors, what you want to choose, but the Enviro RD10 for complete beginners is great. And I would say the second that I would recommend the most for complete beginners would be this tri-field here. Mm. Uh, the tri-field used to be extremely popular. It's like one of the first meters that people have been using, like the old school people, like in, the, I think in the, in the, the end of the 90s, it, it, was, uh, it was available, but it wasn't so precise. This is a brand new version called TF2. Mm. It's very precise. Uh, it's it's precise enough in the three types of EMS we discussed about, so the radio frequency slash micro radiation, the magnetic fields, and the electrical fields, and uh, it has a digital display. So mm. it, it is, let's say, the advanced version of this little guy, a little bit more costly, around two hundred dollars, but uh, it might be worth the investment. And for magnetic fields, it's extremely precise. It's great. Mm. So. Again, this is like these these tri meters. Why I love them is that you pay two hundred bucks and you get three things that you can measure. Yeah. But it's not even that is not like bi- building biology level readings. Mm. So this is why it's still um, d- making the investment of hiring a professional is still worth it. Even if you're like, oh, I don't have EMFs at home. I've, I'm I measured with this little meter. Well. It's not exactly that. Mm. Like you could, 
mitigate some of your environment, but let's say if you if you worry about a cell phone tower and the levels at home are okay, but you, you're not sure, well, these are questions that need to be addressed with like professional meters. And then if, uh, like we told in, in the interview, if there's like a, a shielding solution, shielding curtains, really advanced solution, you want a professional to do a before and after, yeah. or else you might do some sort of pseudo shielding, but then the signal gets in more or bounces around. It, it is a profession for a reason. It's, yeah. it, it's, it's complicated matter. So uh, if you get a meter, just keep in mind that the numbers are, are to be taken with a grain of salt, but it's good to have one to kind of assess your environment, find these sources and find this router under the bed. I can't totally. believe it. Uh, I can't insane. believe that happened. It's insane. Did you leave a review on uh, like TripAdvisor or something like that and let them know? Or did you say anything to them? I didn't. Yeah, they, you know, they're probably I felt, not. Yeah, I felt, They're not I, aware. I, I don't know. Maybe maybe I should. I didn't feel like I didn't feel comfortable. I I replaced the bed and everything. I didn't destroy anything. I even I even plugged it back in. And mm -hmm. maybe I should be a little bit more like guerrilla tactics. Like oh, I'm gonna unplug <laughs> everything, and maybe the Wi-Fi is gonna be broken. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, for the for the time being, it's is like I didn't want them to charge my card. Yeah. That's the reality. <laughs> no, I got you. No, it's good, Nick. Yeah. But you're bringing so much awareness to this, and folks, we just did an awesome interview. It was over 90 minutes. Just so many details about how non-native EMF is affecting our body, magnetic fields, and much more, and how to mitigate that. And you have a great webinar, great course that's going on. So links are below this video, and you have a great book as well. So I'll put all those links there, Nick. I, as I said in the interview, really commend you, man, for doing this work because there's a lot of people that are just like saying that. We gotta wait till there's science there, but here we do have meters that are assessing this and these are at un unhealthy levels. And so I uh, keep it up, buddy. Really appreciate that. Thanks. If folks Thanks are listening, right? Yeah, my pleasure. If folks wanna connect with you on social or where wherever and they're like watching right now, where should they go? Sure, uh, they can go to, they can type Nick Pino, but that's a complicated name. So P-I-N-E-A-U-L-T. Uh, eventually, I'm gonna start having a, this new brand, the EMF Guy. So eventually, it's gonna be the EMFGuy.com. But you, now, right now, I'm Nick Pino on YouTube, on Facebook. Uh, for the course, it's mm -hmm. Electrosmog RX. But look at the the links again that we posted on on this page. There's a few a few resources for health practitioners, and the guide is called the Non Tinfoil Guide to EMF. That's on Amazon, on, on all good online stores. Yeah, and the Kindle version. It's and great. And the Kindle version is there as well for sure. So cool. All right, guys, yeah. I'll put all the links there. And again, if you know someone that could benefit from this, it's, maybe they're not getting good, deep, restorative sleep. They feel like they're aging faster than they should. Share this video with them because it can really help. And then the interview, which I'll put right here, guys, is really good as well. So with thanks as always for tuning in. Nick, catch you on the next one, bud. Really appreciate Thank you, it. Mike.